Hi and welcome back to a new video. I'm not quite sure if you noticed this the way I did it because like honestly if you observed the SSD cooling market over the previous like half year or year it seems like for whatever reason the cooling methods or solution there escalated. I noticed this especially when I saw the gold plated EK cooler which is probably more like a visual thing but then I mean there are things like this or, or like this one or like like some RGB solutions and like yeah I went on a shopping tour and I bought I think like 20 or 30 SSD coolers I'm pretty sure that most of them won't make sense Makita is agreeing with me and yeah we will test some of these today Makita okay seems like a boring topic for her this is the setup which we are going to use today. It's a simple C790 platform and I decided to use this board because it just allows to mount a huge amount of M.2 SSDs. Also, I'm running off the iGPU so we don't have any additional airflow from a GPU that might sit above this. I mounted the system drive in here which would theoretically steal PCI Express lanes but since we're not running a GPU that should be absolutely fine. And on here we have a 2TB PCI Express Gen 4 Corsair SSD which should allow us to give a decent heat load to test any of these coolers. In Crystal Disk Info you can see the Corsair MP600 Pro XT with 2TB. It's also a pretty fresh drive, only used or powered up about 500 times, has about 276 hours of use. So yeah, I would consider it a pretty new drive. We are testing everything with Crystal Disk Mic. We set it to nine times sequential read and write and we're going to repeat this three times, so in total 27 cycles. You can also see how quickly the temperature rises, only at four out of nine and we are already approaching 60 degrees Celsius without a heatsink. And at a fifth out of nine, currently doing the write cycles, we are hitting 70 degrees Celsius on the drive. And halfway through the test, you can see the drive is definitely throttling. It's still just 70 degrees Celsius, but we are far from the about 6,000 megabyte per second we should have in both read and write speeds. Without heatsink, the MP600 XT will reach a critical temperature of 70 degrees Celsius within one minute and thus will throttle. Due to the very low mass of the SSD, so it's just a couple of chips and a small PCB, it can dissipate the heat after the load quite quickly. And after about four minutes without load, the SSD will reach the starting temperature. So we will look at two different things. How quick will the SSD with cooler potentially reach the critical temperature of 70 degrees Celsius? And how quick can it dissipate the heat after end of the test? For the next comparison, we are going to check the mainboard included cooling solution. For the first test, I also had the thermal pad that is sitting underneath the SSD removed. Now I'm going to add the huge heatsink on top and let's see how this performs. The Aorus Master mainboard cooler can just benefit from the huge amount of mass. It can transfer the heat both to the top and also to the bottom side of the mainboard using all the thermal pads and stuff. This leads to a maximum temperature of 45 degrees Celsius and even after the test it will reach the starting temperature within less than a minute. But I also have to point out that it has almost no surface area, well in addition to the stock surface area, but like no fins. This means that once this will have a certain temperature, it will take a bit longer to dissipate the heat again. Next up is the EK block and this is actually just aluminium, but it's gold plated. But honestly speaking, just subjectively, it doesn't have a lot of surface area. One thing that could definitely improve is, well, first of all, you have different thermal pad sizes or thicknesses included, which is okay because you could have a single-sided or like a double-sided SSD, but they are too wide in general. So you have to cut them in shape. That could definitely be easier. SSD is installed using two 0.5 millimeter thick thermal pads. It looks at least quite neat. Let's try it. The EK Quantum Convection Gold SSD cooler seems just to buffer with its pure mass. And it reaches 62 degrees Celsius at the end of our test. And even after four minutes, so at the end of our test, it is still quite hot. And it can only lower the temperature after the test by about 15 degrees Celsius within the cool down phase. And the SSD without any cooler could cool down 
by 27 degrees Celsius. So it looks like it is just a buffer mass. It cannot really cool because it doesn't have a good amount of surface area. So it can take up some heat, but it will store the heat. And that's not really a good thing. Now continuing with the next cooler that's a bit obscure. And it only took two months to arrive from AliExpress. And yes, I've been planning this video for longer than I expected. Yeah, it uh, definitely looks a bit more obscure. At least the cooler did not have this bend when I ordered it on the picture. It did not look like this. So that's going to be interesting. It seems to be just like fully made out of copper. And yeah, that's going to be, I don't know, that's going to be quite interesting. We have cable ties, some rubber bands and a single thermal pad. It is really intended to be mounted this way using two rubber bands. Like, like that is like one of the worst mounting methods ever. We're just going to do this for today's video, but honestly, don't ever use any coolers that are held down by rubber bands because rubber bands, if you expose them to UV light for a longer period and also to heat, they are going to get very brittle. And I guarantee you within one or two years, it's just going to snap out of nowhere and then your cooler will fall down. I don't know, it might cause some short circuits on like a board, it might fall down into the PSU or whatever is underneath fans. Just, just don't use these mounting methods ever. As you saw in the earlier footage of this cooler, there are also some zip ties included. I didn't see them on the picture, like on the mounting explanation, but they are probably going to be better than using these rubber bands because at least that they are not going to snap over time. I still feel a bit scammed with this SSD cooler because online, if you check the images and if you count the lamellas, you have about 60 fins and here I have 35. So yeah, I'm missing like 50% of my fins. Where are they? The Depot figures, I'm really not sure how to pronounce this cooler is performing quite a lot worse than I expected. At the end of our test, we reached 70 degrees Celsius and this is probably just seconds away from throttling. Just in the cooldown phase, it was fairly quick, but not really better than just the naked or bare SSD. But we also want to have a bit of RGB in our system, right? So we have a block from John's bow. They are joking, right? I mean, this is, this is a joke, I hope. Because there is a thermal pad included and a screw. And you're supposed to mount this, like, you just put it on top and then you screw it down with this single screw on this tiny end. I don't even have a place to put the screw. Are they serious? And first I also thought this might work if you screw it down from that angle and then you have these tiny notches on here that might hold down the SSD, but the cooler is actually wider than the SSD, so that's not going to help at all. But I mean, it has RGB, right? So it must be great. But honestly speaking, I mean, I'm going to test it, but I would never put this inside my system because this is very loose. And if I move this to the side, like by 0.5 millimeter, I can just lift it off. So yeah, very, very insecure mounting. I mean, it also has to be a great idea, right? To have some sort of heatsink underneath and then just cover it entirely with some plastic thing on top. Yeah, what a great idea. In this curve, we can see that the Johnsbo M.2 cooler, it's not really a cooler. And even if you pay more attention to the curve itself, like in between the tests, it does not lower the temperature. It's just storing the temperature. And because of the additional plastic cover on top, at the end of our tests, there is no real cooldown. That's, it's just a terrible result. Compared to the Johnsbo cooler, that is probably the extreme on the other side. Pre-installed thermal pads and also with this like tiny notch on the side. That's actually quite nice. At least size-wise, I mean, I'm not going to complain about the surface area. I'm expecting very good cooling from this one. The Thermalrite HR09 is delivering very good results. And that's just due to the mass and also surface area as expected. The curve is very similar to the mainboard stock cooling curve. And we are reaching a max temperature of 46 degrees Celsius. Moving over to another RGB cooler, and this has to be great, right? Because it's it's performance A plus series. So, I mean performance, A plus. And when you think that the cooling couldn't be worse than the Johnsbo cooler with the RGB cover on the heatsink, then 
I present you this, which is not even a heatsink at all. I mean, th this is <laughs> this is just a block with some sort of plastic cover on top. Great. Also, great detail. I added both of the thermal pads that were included, and you will not be able to add any screws in this. Awesome. Who would have thought? Our Performance A Plus series. I'm not going to call it cooler because it's more like a hot box, because it's just going to it's just going to contain heat. It's still very hot, and I mean this does not cool anything. It's just absorbing the initial amount of heat, and then it, it will stay warm because at the end of the test the SSD started to throttle, so it could not keep up with the read and write bandwidth because it exceeded 70 degrees Celsius. Makita is also not happy. The results are similar to the Johnswo M22, but it will reach the 70 degrees Celsius even quicker and earlier. And this leads to throttling of the SSD, as I mentioned before. And even after the test, there, there is like no cooldown because it just does not have any kind of surface area. Yeah, this is not a cooler. But maybe this one might be better cooling wise. Elec gear. M11 M.2 SSD cooler and what's interesting is that they are stating they included a 9300 rpm fan 9300 rpm that's quite a bit it's a quite tiny fan but it might still be loud we will find out this is one of these typical aliexpress items where you order a product and actually this does not even look bad the quality of this heatsink looks pretty awesome not going to complain but you get a shit ton of stuff with it that you just don't need. Like, there's thermal paste included, okay. The manual states clearly that you have to use thermal pads, and these thermal pads are also quite odd. I mean, I don't know. Could just be one piece instead of multiple pieces. That's quite weird. According to the manual, you are supposed to use the single pads for the individual ICs, which is just not going to work out because of the different sizes. It would just make so much more sense to have one big pad, but okay. They are also advertising a patented angle adjustable structure. Not quite sure what you want to adjust here because this is all like this is all solid. The heatsink is like pressed to the heat pipe, so yeah, like you cannot adjust anything. I don't get it. They also don't explain what it actually means. I'm pretty sure I would not want to have this sitting in my PC with 9000 RPM. This is pretty loud. Yeah. But I think we will just run it once with 9000 RPM and then maybe just lower the fan speed to maybe like 2000 RPM where you might not really hear it. I actually figured out what they meant with the patented angle whatever mechanism. So there are two screws in the heatsink down there and if you loosen them you can move the heatsink a little bit to the side like either left or right and this way maybe make a bit more space for other components. Interesting. Well you can see that due to the high noise we're also getting pretty good cooling. The SSD is always staying about 4 to 5 degrees Celsius below the heatsink of the Aros Master mainboard. And also at the end of our test you can see that it's rapidly dropping in temperature in the cooldown phase. It's a pretty good result but honestly like, like you cannot stand this noise level. And thus, as promised, we are testing the same cooler again with 2000 RPM. It will increase the temperature by about 3 to 4 degrees Celsius, which is totally acceptable considering that with 2000 RPM, because it's a tiny fan, you cannot hear it anymore. So still a pretty good result. The last cooler for today is made by Archgon. Archgon, okay, and this is the only cooler that is screwed down or mounted down from the top. So you first place the thermal pads in here, SSD in there, another thermal pad, and then you can screw it down from the top using these screws. So mounting pressure wise, this should be the best mounting solution. Mounting was pretty nice and the pressure also seems to be pretty solid. The only thing I didn't understand is why they used like thumb or like knurled screws and why they are so high because like they're a bit inside the heatsink, so you cannot access them with your fingers, so you have to use a screwdriver. This way it just doesn't make sense why they would be so long. That's something they could change, but overall, mounting was pretty nice. 
I also want to point out that the cooler is not able to lay flat on the board simply because it's a bit too high on the bottom and having these like metal plates underneath even though the thermal pad is removed underneath but it's, it's still too high so I cannot put it down all the way. I think the results of Archgon are quite acceptable for a passive heatsink. It doesn't have a huge amount of mass so it doesn't really buffer but it seems to be capable of some good cooling due to the high surface area. We see maximum of 54 degrees Celsius under load and it is cooling down in a cool down phase with an acceptable speed. Originally my plan was to test all of these like 20 or 25 heat sinks in one video and then I figured out that's not going to happen because it took me like almost the entire afternoon now and I think this would result in a video that's like two hours long so yeah. I'm ending it right here. It's already quite exciting what kind of results we could see from things like this. If you look at this first, you might think this could actually be quite nice with like made fully out of copper and you have some decent surface area on top. This might work if you have direct airflow on the heatsink, which is not going to happen probably. And also like don't ever mount anything with rubber bands. It's a very bad idea. Just don't do that. And also, I mean, let's like, like the Johnsbo heatsink. Who came up with this design? Like, <laughs> did somebody ever mount this while developing? Because this is not going to stay on your SSD. Like, like terrible mounting design. And that's why also that the like, silence, this is not a cooler. This is like, if you want to have RGB on your SSD, then you could add this, but this just, it just doesn't make any kind of sense. And that's the same for like the thermal ride heatsink, even though it's delivering good thermals and same goes to the Elec gear. They have good temperature results, but I just don't see why you would need that. Most of the time, if you have a board like this, just use the, the standard heatsink. It should be fine for any kind of normal load. Like even if you're video editing, anything like this will be fine. If you're constantly loading your SSD on 100% for whatever reason, then you might need something like this and if you have a board that does not have any heatsink then yeah maybe something like this would be more sufficient but then again the MP600 XT also comes with a heatsink included so you probably don't need it at all yeah we can do a follow-up video if you want to there are more obscure things something like this if you want to see it let me know in the comments also here is the chart with all the SSDs included. I did not want to use this for a comparison in between. I just thought it would be better to have the SSD bare and also with the mainboard heatsink for comparison. But if you want to see all of them combined in one chart, it's a lot of lines. You can maybe pause and see this more in detail if you want to. Otherwise, thanks for tuning in. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. See you next time. Bye bye.